This is some late breaking news from Lee Fong, who just posted on Substack an audio recording of Disney CEO Bob Iger talking about AI innovation. This was on an earnings call. So this is public record, right, um, that he posted on his Substack. This is Bob Iger talking about the potential benefits of AI. This is, of course, particularly important now that the writers and the Screen Actors Guild uh, are on strike. Part of what they are concerned about is having their labor undermined by new AI technology and innovation and how that will be used by studio heads like Bob Iger. So let's take a listen. It's pretty clear that AI developments represent some pretty op interesting opportunities for us um, and some su substantial benefits. In fact, we're already starting to use AI to create some efficiencies and ultimately to better serve consumers. Getting closer to the, cus the customer is something that is a real goal of ours, and we think that um, AI will provide some great opportunities to do that. But it's also clear that AI is going to be highly disruptive and it could be extremely difficult to manage, particularly from an IP management perspective. I can tell you that um, our legal team is, is working overtime already to try to come to grips with what could be some of the challenges here. And we're certainly not the only ones. I think this is across not only our industry, but industries. So I'd have to say overall, I'm bullish about the prospects because I think they'll create efficiencies and ways for us to um, basically provide better services to customers. On the other hand, I think that there's a lot we're going to have to contend with that will be quite disruptive and quite challenging. I, getting more specific is not something I really am prepared to do right now. All right, so there you have it. So what he's outlining there does validate a lot of the concerns of the union members that they could be about to be replaced uh, with this AI technology. Uh, but also, also... Um, it does indicate that there are some potential problems on the studio side because on the one hand, yeah, it could save them a lot of money and labor costs, but on the other hand, it could really compromise their ability to generate repeated revenues off of their own IPs because as we've shown, we can replicate a classic painting using an AI prompt. Right. Wow. We can create our own Toy Story or Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast short film using an AI prompt. We had a viewer come in uh, on our patron show last time saying they they asked the AI to write a Tennessee Williams play on Lindsey Graham, which was a great <laughs> that was <an> excellent prompt. <laughs> but you can generate a Tennessee Williams play with AI, right? So, right. yeah, they're going to potentially save a lot of money on the labor side, which is, of course, a valid concern of the unions. But on the other hand, as he said, they stand to lose a lot of money on their IP side, on their royalty side, licensing, all that could go up in smoke. I mean, it could just be a total game changer almost overnight. Yeah, well, this... This just kind of reaffirms uh, what I've been saying. Look, the, these people aren't stupid. I think they've been trying to play two things that they were hoping they could do at the same time. They were hoping they could juice the ESG scores and retain audiences. And now rapidly it's becoming clear that they can't, and that's forcing turmoil in that area. I only point that out to say... I think people will look at how bad a lot of the product they've been releasing over the last few years is and say, these guys must be stupid. It's not they're stupid. They were trying to have it both ways, and it didn't work out. And now they're having to refigure how they can walk that line in a way that brings their audiences back now that they've alienated them while at the same time getting their ESG scores up. Um, but on this level... Sure, man. They're they're salivating, but honestly, I think that's short-sighted. Uh, building on what I was saying the other day, like, yeah, they're going to be able to do a lot of things without paying people, and they recognize it. And this is why, according to, and by the way, so this the recording we played, that's from their second quarter earnings call, which is public. But Lee Fong did the legwork of going and listening to that earnings call and finding something interesting in there that's relevant to this strike and bringing it to light 
So definitely go on his sub stack, subscribe if you can. He's breaking a lot of great stories. And uh, he, 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 we wouldn't have, we definitely wouldn't have noticed this if he hadn't gone back and found it. Nobody yeah, would've. yeah, we subbed to his uh, Substack. Totally worth it. Um, he's doing a lot of work too. I mean, you know, he's dropping stuff. Not necessarily every day, but at least a few times a week, he's dropping really. And he's breaking stuff. right. Yeah, he's breaking a lot of news. Right. It's like, not no, just nobody. Commentary. It's not just like yeah. us where we right. talk about exactly. the news and joke we're about commenting it. On take the, the piss on out of it. Right. Exactly. We're, do, yeah. we're, do, we're doing the morning weather report. The chopper. <laughs> exactly. The yeah. Thing. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so they're saying, and Fong gets into this in his article. You might you might have heard the uh, you know the executive said anonymously, um, you know we're waiting for them to start losing their apartments and their houses. But Fong reinforces that in his article. Yeah, uh, uh, you know these CEOs have kind of talked to the Wall Street people, meaning BlackRock, Vanguard. They've talked to the money people. And said, hey, look, if we hold out until they go broke, we could break these unions and we can go forward as we want. <laughs> and according to Fong's reporting, Wall Street said, OK, go ahead, do it. So this, according to his reporting, the implication is this is not going to wrap up anytime soon because they have no interest in ending it because they see what the future is because because I, you know not that i'm siding with them but if you look at the big picture even if hollywood signs contracts with these actors and writers that they're not going to use ai in the way that they don't want them to that means hollywood is going to be the only sector of society that can't everybody else will we will right right I, I, when, when when my adobe premiere allows me to just say image Man on bench, Central Park, blonde. You think I'm not going to do that? Of course I'm going to do that. I'm going to sit here and make my movie. I'm going to dictate my movie. Everybody's going to do it. Oh, stock so photos, everything. I mean, what are all these photo licensing companies going to do when you can just make your own image, right? Right. It's right. just going to be a complete game changer in all kinds of ways. O over the next five years, that's why what these actors and writers are asking for is basically for, and I think this is why, I think Hollywood recognizes this, and this is why they're willing to go to the mat over it. They'll wind up being uniquely bound by rules that nobody else is playing by because you're not going to have the bar to entry anymore. <laughs> Anyone will be able to make a movie. You're not even going to need a fucking camera. Look, this has been a process. When I was a child, when I was a kid, I used to make eight millimeter movies, man. That cost a lot of money. <laughs> oh yeah, then. of course. Like, yeah, like the film stock, the developing, all that. So you already <laughs> went to the next level where then you had video, but you couldn't be taken seriously with videotape stuff. It was purely for like artsy museum of modern art kind of stuff. Digital is where you first really started being able to shoot films for no real money in terms of the film stock development, all that. This is the next step. You're not even going to need to shoot it. Right. right, you just it, it's it's going to cost nothing but the software. Once you have the software, it'll just make it. So Hollywood is going to be like the one sector of society that can't use AI. That's why they're going to the mat about this because we're about to enter a different world. And no matter how this resolves itself, no matter what agreement they come to, Hollywood as a as an enterprise as we've known it is over. It's done. That whole business model. Once you democratize content creation at a sophisticated level to that degree, the expertise, the labor and the capital and the equipment that is required to make a movie, it's all gone. And at that point, what do you need Hollywood for? Please clap.